What if we drop the D-Rex into the real Jurassic period? Day one, Apex Predator. Day three, dead. Not from fighting, not from starvation, but from something so ridiculously obvious that when I reveal it, you'll wonder how Hollywood missed it when making the new movie. The D-Rex looks impressive on paper. 10 tons of angry dinosaur with six limbs and a skull that could crush a car. The kind of stats that make movie executives drool and kids buy toys. But here's the thing about being 10 tons. You need to eat a lot. A normal T-Rex ate around 500 pounds of meat per day. That's already half a cow daily. The D-Rex weighs twice as much. So we're looking at roughly 1,000 pounds of fresh meat every single day just to keep this thing from starving. Now, you might think the Jurassic period was packed with easy meals. Wrong. Most herbivores back then were either tiny or absolutely massive. The tiny ones could hide or run away, and the massive ones could step on you. Let's do some quick math here. The D-Rex needs to kill something the size of a modern horse every day. In the Jurassic, that means hunting Stegosaurus. You know, the ones with four giant spikes on their tails, specifically designed to kill predators. The Thagomizer. And while we're talking about the Thagomizer, you should Thagomize the subscribe and like button of this video. So every day, this genetic nightmare has to fight a walking pincushion just to avoid dying of hunger and that's assuming it wins every fight the d-rex also burns extra calories because of its size big animals use more energy just existing plus those four extra arms need their own blood supply and muscle maintenance it's burning fuel faster than a pickup truck with a hole in the gas tank the math starts to get worse though when you realize hunting success rates real predators fail most of the time lions succeed maybe 20 percent of the time if the d-rex has similar luck it needs to attempt five kills per day just to eat one that's five stegosaur fights per day with those tail spikes forever this is where the movie fantasy crashes into biological reality the d-rex isn't just big it's too big every pound of muscle that makes it look scary also makes it hungrier and hungrier means more desperate and more desperate means more dead. The creature designed to be unstoppable is actually starving to death in slow motion from day one. But those arms, they're not just for grabbing its food. Because having six limbs sounds amazing if you remember you only have one brain. Think about it for one second. Have you ever tried to do arm circles with one arm and rub your tummy at the exact same time? It is very hard to do. And you've been using your arms and legs your entire life. The D-Rex has four arms plus two legs and zero practice. It also isn't supposed to have four arms so its brain isn't even functional for the limbs it has every movement is going to become a puzzle which arm grabs the prey which one holds it down what are the other two doing oh right they're probably smacking into each other because nobody programmed this thing properly watch a toddler try to use chopsticks that's the d-rex trying to coordinate four arms during a hunt except the chopsticks weigh 500 pounds each and the food fights back but hollywood thinks more arms equals more deadly sure with that logic more steering wheels is going to make my car go faster the real problem isn't coordination though it's balance two arms your body knows how to handle that four arms your spine has no idea what's happening every time this thing tries to grab something heavy it's basically doing a trust fall with itself and here is my favorite part those middle arms the ones near its torso they're completely useless they're too short to grab anything important and too weak to hunt anything big they're just flailing around during fights making the d-rex look like it's having a seizure so now it's not just hungry all the time it's hungry and clumsy every hunt turns it into a slapstick routine where a 10 ton monster trips over its own arms while trying to catch dinner nature spent millions of years figuring out that two arms worked pretty damn well the d-rex's designers apparently thought they could improve on this during a weekend brainstorming session they couldn't and the result a creature that punches itself in the face every time it tries to run which would be funny if it wasn't also supposed to be a killing machine and speaking of killing machines wait till you see what happens when it tries to breathe i'm just gonna say it the t-rex is a head of a beluga whale stuck on a t-rex body or more specifically its design is inspired by a flower horn cichlid this is a type of fish look at its head now look at the d-rex's head do you see the similarity anyways this isn't just a design choice this is a medical emergency do you see how it has a flat face that's called bracephaly i don't know how to pronounce that word but that's what it kind of sounds like you know what else has bracephaly pugs 
and pugs spend half of their lives wheezing and the other half passing out from lack of oxygen. Now imagine a pug that weighs 10 tons and needs to sprint after its prey. The D-Rex's airways are basically crushed shut by its own skull. Every breath is work, hard work, and this thing needs a lot of oxygen because giant muscles burn through air faster than a house fire. But wait, it gets worse. The Jurassic period had less oxygen than today about 15 to 19 percent instead of our current 21 percent that might not sound like much but when you're already struggling to breathe through a squashed face every percentage point matters and i know there's gonna be a lot of people in the comments saying wait i thought there was more oxygen in prehistory not less and you're kind of right that was during the cretaceous during the triassic and jurassic it was actually lower so anyways, the D-Rex is essentially trying to run a marathon while breathing through a coffee stirrer in an oxygen poor environment, while also being the size of a small building. After just one chase, this thing would be gasping on the ground, not because it's tired, but because it literally cannot get enough air into its lungs to stay conscious. Some real dinosaurs had special air sacs in their bones to help with breathing. The D-Rex? Nope, just crushed nasal passages and a prayer. You could probably outrun this apex predator by walking briskly up a small hill. Just like me in fifth grade gym class, it would have to stop every 50 feet to catch its breath. This is the ultimate killing machine that gets winded just going up a hill. And that's before we even get to its self-destruct programming. Whoever programmed the D-Rex decided to give it one special ability. It's attracted to bright lights. No, really, this 10-ton murder machine has the brain of a moth. In the Jurassic period, the brightest things at night are forced fires, lightning strikes, and active volcanoes. You know, the stuff that kills you. So while every other predator is running away from danger, the D-Rex walks directly towards it on purpose because shiny picture this there's a massive lightning storm rolling through the forest all the smart dinosaurs are hiding under trees or in caves the d-rex it's standing in the middle of a field staring at the pretty flashes this isn't hunting behavior this isn't territorial aggression this is just pure concentrated stupidity coded into its dna during the day it might wander into tar pits because they reflect sunlight or follow the glint of water right off a cliff or chase lightning bugs into to a swamp full of giant crocodiles. I don't know. The designers thought this would make for a cool movie scene and a great plot point to help them get off the island. And sure, it does. But in real life, it's a death sentence with legs. Because if you ever put out a bug zapper, do you see how effective those are? They murder entire colonies of insects. Normal predators avoid unnecessary risks. They have survival instincts. The D-Rex has whatever the opposite of survival instincts are called. Self-destruction instincts, death wishes, I don't know. Scientists probably have a fancy word for it, but the simple version is this thing is programmed to kill itself. Every night literally becomes Russian roulette. Will there be a lightning storm? Will something catch fire? Will the moon reflect off a lake just right? If yes, the D-Rex abandons whatever it was doing and marches towards certain doom, while probably wheezing from all of that walking because of its breathing problems. So yeah, you could defeat the ultimate apex predator with a really strong flashlight, but even that's not its biggest problem. Because just like me, the D-Rex is the loneliest creature that ever lived. Not in a sad movie way, in a this kills you kind of way. There's exactly one D-Rex in existence, one total ever made, which means it has nobody to learn from, nobody to hunt with, and nobody to watch its back while it's busy chasing shiny objects. Most predators figure out how to survive by watching their parents. The D-Rex, it's winging it every single day. It doesn't know which prey are dangerous. It doesn't know where to find water. It doesn't know what plants are poisonous or which areas flood during storms. Every other dinosaur grew up with this information. The D-Rex has to figure it out through trial and error, except errors usually mean death when you're dealing with things that can step on you. But the isolation gets worse. This thing has no idea how to interact with other predators. Normal animals have social rules even if they don't get along. The D-Rex missed that class because the class never existed for it, so it probably treats every encounter as a fight to the death, which is exhausting. Meanwhile, other predators might work together sometimes with pack hunting or sharing kills and basic cooperation, or they might know to just leave each other the F alone. But the D-Rex gets none of that. It's a solo act trying to survive in a world built for teams. And here's the real kicker, it can't reproduce. Even if it wanted to, there's nobody else around. So every day it survives is just delaying the inevitable. No children, no family line, 
no genetic legacy. Most animals have some biological drive to find mates and continue their species. The D-Rex has that same drive hardwired into its brain, but zero possibility of ever fulfilling it. That is got to mess with your head. It's literally a creature designed to dominate everything, slowly going insane from loneliness while its own body falls apart, which brings us to exactly how that body begins to break down. Skeletons for all service purposes are like a marvel of biological engineering. The D-Rex weighs 20,000 pounds and expects its bones to handle running, jumping, and fighting. Every step puts massive stress on its joints. Every time it turns its head, the neck vertebrae are going to scream in protest. Every time it swings those four arms, the spine twists in ways it was never designed for. Dinosaur bones are strong, but they're not magic. There is a weight limit. The D-Rex blew past that limit during its first growth spurt because it genetically doesn't know what it is. It's supposed to be part T-Rex and part Velociraptor. It doesn't know what it is. Real T-Rexes already lived on the edge of what bones could support. They moved carefully. They avoided unnecessary risks. One bad fall could break a leg and that's game over. The D-Rex doesn't have that luxury. It's carrying extra weight from those bonus arms. Its center of gravity is completely wrong. And remember, it has terrible coordination. So falls happen a lot and thus it needs to use its arms to help support its weight when a 200 pound person falls down they get a bruise when a 20,000 pound dinosaur falls down bones snap big bones but even without falling the d-rex is slowly breaking itself stress fractures appear in the foot bones from normal walking hip joints wear down faster than they can heal the spine develops permanent curves from supporting that massive head unlike humans there is no physical therapy in the jurassic there's no pain medication and there's no surgery to fix torn ligaments once something breaks it stays broken and broken bones get infected and infections kill you to put this in perspective when i was nine years old i jumped off of a play structure and i landed on my stomach with my arm across my chest like this and i broke my arm problem was is that they didn't know it was broken and it started to heal wrongly so basically if my arm was like this it was healing at an off angle like that if we didn't have medicine i would be dead right now so in the jurassic all the dinosaurs that break their bones they're dying the d-rex isn't just fighting other dinosaurs for survival Survival. It's fighting its own skeleton every day. By year two, it's probably limping. By year three, it can barely walk. By year four, standing up becomes impossible. The ultimate predator defeated by gravity and basic physics. All that genetic engineering and nobody thought to check if the bones could actually handle the job. Classic human oversight. Build first, test later, discover problems when it's too late to fix them. But the broken bones are nothing compared to what lives inside them. Because diseases in the Jurassic period were hardcore. We're talking about parasites that haven't seen a human engineered creature before. To them, the D-Rex is fresh meat with zero natural defenses. Modern dinosaur fossils show bite marks from tiny organisms that ate holes straight through T-Rex jaw bones. These weren't big dramatic battles, just microscopic creatures slowly dissolving bone while the dinosaur was still alive. The D-Rex walks into this environment with an immune system that's never been tested. It's a genetic mashup from different species, which means its disease resistance is basically experimental. So first week in the Jurassic, intestinal worms from drinking bad water. By week two, blood parasites from insect bites. Week three brings respiratory infections because its crushed airways can't clear out bacteria properly. But here's where it gets interesting. The T-Rex can't just rest and recover when it's sick. It needs to hunt every day or it starves. So it's trying to chase down stegosaurs while running a fever and coughing up blood. Every wound becomes infected because newsflash, there's no antibiotic soap in the Jurassic. That scratch from a failed hunt, now it's oozing pus and attracting flies. Those flies lay eggs in the wound, those eggs become maggots. The D-Rex is literally being eaten alive by creatures too small to fight back against. And unlike modern animals that evolved alongside these diseases, the D-Rex has no inherited resistance. Its parents never survived these infections and passed down immunity because its parents were test tubes. So while native dinosaurs shrug off parasites their ancestors dealt with for millions of years, the D-Rex gets knocked flat by the common cold equivalent. Within six months, this apex predator is probably covered in open sores, coughing 
swing constantly and too weak to catch anything bigger than a sick fish. And how do we know this? Because watch the most recent movie. Almost all of the dinosaurs on Earth after being there for 20 years are dying out due to global heat levels, diseases, and lack of oxygen. The proof is in the pudding. Here's how the D-Rex survives in the Jurassic period. It doesn't. Three days. That's the actual timeline. Day one goes pretty well. The D-Rex wakes up, looks around, and everything seems manageable. Sure, it's hungry. Sure, it's wheezing a bit. But it's also massive and scary. So smaller dinosaurs keep their distance. Day two is when the problems start stacking up. The hunger is getting serious now. It tries to hunt the stegosaur, but those coordination issues kick in. While it's figuring out which arms to use for what, the stegosaur tags it with a tail spike. Not fatal, but now there's a bleeding wound that's already getting infected. The D-Rex is hurt, hungry, and starting to panic. And panicked animals make bad decisions. And day three is when that built-in self-destruct programming finally activates. There's a storm rolling in, a big one. The kind that turns the sky black and makes smart animals hide in caves. D-Rex sees the lightning. So there it is, a 10-ton genetic mistake standing in the middle of an open field during a massive electrical storm staring up at the sky with its tiny eyes completely mesmerized by the light show the lightning strikes hit the tallest object in the area which at the moment happens to be a silly fascinated dinosaur with its head tilted back probably making happy little dinosaur noises 10 million volts of electricity course 20 000 pounds of poorly designed monster game over d-rex doesn't die in glorious combat it doesn't get taken down by a pack of clever predators it doesn't even starve to death despite its massive food requirements it dies because it saw something shiny and forgot that standing in open fields during thunderstorms is a bad idea and the most embarrassing part this was completely preventable if the genetic engineers had just left out whatever dna sequence makes it chase bright lights the d-rex might have survived long enough to die from one of its many other problems but no they had to make it special. They had to give it the one thing they could use to control it instead of, you know, just leaving nature alone. And the result, evolution's most expensive mistake gets deleted from existence by basic weather patterns. If you enjoyed this video, let me know what you think down below. Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think the D-Rex could actually survive? Let me know how you think it would. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this and comment other video ideas down below. And if you wanna watch more of our content, make sure to click the video on screen now.